Well, there's been a lot of talk about Wokehammer or Warhammer 40k in this case, about the female, is it Custodes? Am I saying that right for everyone out there? I hope I am. But some level heads have prevailed at this point and they're bringing forth some very meaningful points on why it is wrong for Games Workshop to lie to everyone and to change this fandom and the lore to suit the needs of an Amazon show. Before I get into it, if you like the stuff I do here, maybe think of subscribing, or if you wanna help out, I do have a Patreon and YouTube memberships available as well. Anyway, this is an open letter to Games Workshop and White Dwarf Publishing. As a gay man, I'd like to talk to you about how I feel unsafe about recent changes. It's not what you think. Spending my life unwelcome from spaces has me have empathy to people I like. I hope John and Johnny Donovan doesn't leave. That's exactly what the bigots want. So the bigots down here are coming from a article from Warhammer 40K, only bigots hate female adeptus custodies. So it's absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> this is Bell of Lost Souls calling all the gamers that don't like this idea bigots. And this is something we said would happen, uh, that access media would turn around and do these things. Oh no, women are coming to ruin 40k. No, the women has always been in 40k. That is the big deal here. The big deal is that the, the adept custodies are being changed just for diversity matters. And that is the big deal here. Anyway, it is too easy for me to say this isn't a big deal, and it might not be for some people, but I hope you take a look at the following and possibly come away with better informed. And if it's not a big deal, then why make the change? Why bother with this change? All the more reason not to make it. But I guess Amazon's new show may do something and I'm not sure what. Maybe people are overreacting, but it's way too easy that then to analyze what the heck is going on through the titles of Alarmist that woke hammer or this or girl hammer. You know, this is the world we live in. This is the YouTube. This is the algorithm of YouTube. Without certain catchy titles, without these things, the videos don't do anything. And this, and I have seen this in my comments, people calling me grifters or a grifter. Honestly, I don't make crap on these videos right now. I do this as a hobby. I'm doing this to try and grow as a content creator and to try and bring news of something that I'm passionate about. And that is video games in particular and gaming and everything like that. I love all types of video games and gaming, tabletop board games. I have shelves of tabletop board games and Warhammer is one of those games that I've always sat there on the sidelines, looking at these absolute amazing models, looking at these paintable models that people do some amazing jobs on. And I sit there in awe of some of the work that I have seen. So when I see a fandom get very upset, when I see Games Workshop sitting there changing the rules, I have to speak up and I have to say, listen, what you're doing is the same thing we've seen in many different fandoms where it just brings it down and it never works out well in the end. And it just creates this toxic atmosphere where one side draws a line and everyone wants to fight each other. And in this particular case, we have someone here that has absolutely no stake in seeing women being changed in one faction, just in one faction. They have absolutely no stake in it. And they sit there and go, this just creates toxicity. It creates an absolute nightmare to trudge through. And it leaves people wanting to leave the hobby over, not people being bigots, over Games Workshop's stupid decisions. Something that should not be ignored, something incredibly valid and extent, especially the lying on every part of the company. There's more nuance and this is the latest in a bunch of very questionable changes which are alienating women and trans women as we can see here and that's 
and that's there a reason why I don't feel as a gay man in any of this and I may illuminate what the heck is going on. That there are people who pretend to be on the side of progress but are ultimately abusive and are getting their way possibly because they are abusive. This is what it is. It's Games Workshop pretty much telling the fandom you either like this or you can get out of the fandom. I have seen many people on Twitter right now. They are posting screenshots of the official Warhammer banning or blocking their accounts because they cite the lore, because they take parts of the lore and literally screenshot it and send it at the company and the company's having nothing of it. They're, they're, whoever's their community manager, they are literally blocking out their customers at this point. It is too easy to say a 35 year old white cis man, I hate the term cis, uh, it, it, it's a slur. It's an absolute slur. So I'm going to go from here. There, It is too easy to say that there are 35 year old men playing with toys, but this isn't entirely the case and way too easy to ridicule instead of understand. Please choose the understanding route. And John, Johnny Donovan here, it is sad and funny that the bigger accounts can say if it, if it's not X, it's Y, and everyone claps. But folks like me say it's the same effing thing and we're not welcomed in space anymore, lol. Yeah, I'm a little bitter, but I'll get over it. It is why I'm just going to focus on my own creative personal projects rather than devoting energy on the 40k spear. I've been told that I am I don't belong and aren't welcome there, that I'm okay with them just being right. Before I begin, I want to elevate a reasonable voice. You can find it here, and that's Grimasaurus, or Grimasaur. Um, he's covers tabletop stuff. I don't agree with everything the guy says, but I have seen, like when I was doing a lot of stuff early days for the channel, uh, Grim was someone that I did pay attention to quite a bit. Uh, the lore and other questions about female custodies and asteroids aren't that relevant. People should look at the aesthetic. The Imperium of Man is not meant to be an egalitarian or fair society of equality and fairness. It's futile, it's dark. The question it asks, what is justified in the face of annihilation? It's a theocratic thanatocracy and a society engaged in total war. So does this modernist Italianism have a place at in the Imperium. No, it breaks the aesthetic thrust of the setting and faction. It doesn't support and emphasize the unfairness and cruelty uh, or the religious overtones of the setting. They are mosaic aesthetic orders battle brothers. That's the whole point of all of this. It's like going into Skyrim where you have the monks at the top of the hill, at the top of the mountain. They're all men in that case. If suddenly Bethesda came back and changed them out for half of them being women, well then you lose the aesthetic of the entirety of it. You lose the whole idea of the thrones of uh, being these men being scholars and th them being a monk-like society. It's like, without reading the entire thing here, it's like sitting there going and saying, for as many monks there are, there is that many nuns. There are the subsect of the religions being separated in this sense. And going through the, what we've seen here in Warhammer, where suddenly all the monks, the monk-like idea of the custodies turning and being women now, you have to sit there and go, well, why? And everyone claims now, everyone's saying, like with Bell of Lost Souls here, they're calling everyone bigots for hating on female custodies. It, it, it's the aesthetic of it that doesn't make any sense. It's why this is such a stupid and nuanced thing, why Games Workshop is literally shooting themselves in the foot by making these changes. It's absolutely ridiculous in that place. Now this article does highlight some of the uh, some of the responses talking about blackrock and how this is your environmental social justice guidance scores uh, why games workshop is doing what they're doing 
with the fandom. And then this also goes into how Warhammer is for everyone. This is a poster that's gone around where Warhammer put it out a few years ago saying everyone, but that it doesn't really mean what that means, does it? It means it's for everyone that they agree with, not everyone out there in the world. One of the more complicated and compelling is the response in the following image, uh, the Gramascan Lawn March Through Institutions. It's a thin edge of the wedge, a salami slice, a step in the long march through the institutions, how it's always done. You don't know what that is. You were preparing, you aren't not prepared for the 21st century. And what has been going on is dangerous, reactionary, radical circles, many of which have historically been anti-gay, still anti-liberal, and responsible for untold stories of the hollow demore and genocides. Uh, and what we see happening in every part of society if you live under a rock. We're not, we're not taking something, we're adding to it is a lie. And you know, he shows a few comic strips here that I, I'm pretty sure many of us have laughed at for a while now with the way the SJWs and the wokeism has infected the way these games are. You, and then you are not being inclusive. Let's play a game with simpler rules, which everyone can enjoy. I don't want to, then you don't have to join us. That's the whole, the whole purpose here. Making it inclusive and then gatekeeping and shunning out the people that were there in the first place. The people that have been playing these games for a very long time being bullied out of the fandom. I remember in high school when I was playing Magic the Gathering and I would be subject to being bullied. And you would sit there and go, well, why? Why don't you guys just want to play? And no one, everyone said, oh, that's a nerd game. It's a game that we're not going to play because nerds play. We're jocks. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to go play football or something like that. And I just kind of sit there and go, okay, well, I'm going to have fun with my strategy game. You guys have, go have fun with your football game. I enjoy. The concepts are there for both. And it comes down to why can't we get along? And now, to, in today's age, all the nerds are sitting there playing these amazing games and then the outsiders are coming in and saying, you're no longer allowed to play that game without me. And if you if you don't like that, I'm going to take it over. And now you don't get to play your game that you were playing because we've taken it over. And that's what's going on in, the, in these fandoms and why it's such a big deal. It honestly, the lore for Warhammer, I know a lot of people are hammering some of my videos on this stuff. The lore does not matter in this case. This is not about the lore. It's a, more about Games Workshop shoehorning something in there, taking it over, having being the bullies and being very abusive to the fandom that has sat there and helped them grow for years. This is something we saw with Magic the Gathering. Well, this is something we've seen with many different fandoms throughout the years. And this is a corporation that is sitting there trying to tell us that they know better for us. And that is the problem. That is the problem from the gamers alike and why this is such a big deal. They're looking to oust people and stop the sales so their stock can go down. So someone else can turn around and come in and buy more of that stock so they can turn it around in a few years time and say, listen, we saved the fandom. But no one's going to buy it. No one's buying it right now. Nobody asked for this. Nobody wants this absolute bull crap that we are seeing in it. And ultimately, this article shows that it's just gaslighting. That might be a tinfoil, but it's a bunch of people crying for invented pretend barriers to destroy, to invent accusations of sexism against a broad game in order not to offend or even target people. To turn it all into one gray, unidentifiable sludge where any difference is destroyed. Never mind the Sisters of Battle existing for the very purpose. This is some of how fighting sexism as a very white, very male, and very rich games workshop and white dwarf are saying. I, you know, I could care less about the whole white and male crap. This is the investment firms putting pressure on Games Workshop, and it's absolutely tra a travesty to see this game go down this hole. Toning things down to the part of capitalism and socialistic sludge where no one is, a, is offended, but no one is inspired is, in this case, it's weirdos that take a Gramacan ethics and misapply intersectionality to the point where art they don't like is censored 
just like the Santas would do. I, you know, I don't completely agree with that. I don't completely disagree with that. It's, of course, everything that I talk about where it's the other side of the coin. These are things that I've talked about for a very long time in this on this channel. So in other words, the people cheering and making changes to the lore are economic incels, aka tankies, that wish to turn everything into a uniform grey unidentifiable sludge in order to not only stop offense but turn everyone and everything as fungible. All because they think using intersectionality on a damn game is going to help. It won't. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave your likes, your comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I've been your proud Canadian Phoenix in the Shadow. I hope this is kind of enlightening because I think a lot of people are seeing what what I've seen in this article, what I have seen, what the article writer has seen in everything we are seeing in gaming right now. And it doesn't matter what side of the coin you're on because it's all toxic and it's all absolutely downright despicable of these companies that continue to push these narratives down our throat. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day.